All right. Uh, as the Southwest Security House will call our tech increasing in popularity and acceptability amongst Nigerians despite its public criticisms, more support for unconventional security outfits to take off keeps increasing. That's right. More so apart from the support for the geopolitical zone of, the, of Nigeria by some elder statesmen, other geopolitical zones are beginning to consider setting up a regional outfit, security outfit too. So joining us now from Abuja studio is Nigerian environmental and human rights activist Ankyo Briggs, who's also the founder and executive director of non-governmental organization Agape Vat Rights. But before we start with Amoteku, a regional security in Nigeria, I would like her to bring us to speed as regards the audit of the Niger Delta uh, Development Commission. Ankyo was here a couple of uh, weeks back, in fact, last year, to talk yes. about this. I know you're very passionate about this, Mark. Good to see you. Happy New Year. What's the update, Mark? <laughs> Thank you. Happy New Year. Well, the update is that uh, the Niger Delta people are still insisting that the audit uh, should go on and that um, the, the present, uh, whether it's acting MD or the three-man uh, committee headed by Dr. Joy Yowika of River State, um, should continue in that, uh, in that position. Now, um, we're very worried in the Niger Delta with the sort of pressure that we are seeing and hearing that is being applied um, on, the, on the person of uh, Joy Yowika and uh, the team uh, to stop, if you like, to stall the, um, the, the audit, which is not acceptable. I mean, when politics begin to uh, threaten people's lives, when people are doing their, uh, their job, it's not acceptable, and it is not going to be um, acceptable if um, somebody like Joy Yowika is going to be threatened because of the job that she is doing. There has been a lot of corruption, there's been a lot of rot in the Niger Delta, in all the agencies, as a matter of fact, as far as I'm, we're concerned, to do with the Niger Delta uh, region, whether in the area of development or justice and equity. And if we have somebody that wants to stand up and do the right thing, um, the call to, to kill her, to threaten her, all those things are not going to work. We're going to stand with her as long as she's prepared to do what is right for the people of the Niger Delta. It really doesn't even matter what party uh, she belongs to. To. As long as she's from Niger Delta and as long as she's doing the right thing uh, for the Niger Delta people, we will support her and she has all our full support and uh, the support of the Niger Delta self-determination movement to do the right thing uh, in making sure that this audit uh, goes on and is concluded and it's seen to its logical uh, conclusion. And she will not die because she's standing for, uh, for the right thing to do. Uh, in the Niger Delta. Speaking about doing what's right for the people, I want to bring it to Amoteko. Now, since the launch of this uh, regional security outfit, there have been widespread responses, and a certain train of thought has said that the southwest geopolitical zone of Nigeria plans to use Amoteko to succeed from uh, to secede from Nigeria. I want to know what your train of thought is on this, seeing as even the governor of Ekiti State, Governor Kayode Fayemi, has come out to say that this is simply to protect the people from these six states. If they are safe and secure, Nigeria as a whole is safe and secure. What are your thoughts on this? Um, well, definitely, it's only someone who, who has not been in Nigeria, or even if you're outside of Nigeria, if you don't read about what is going on in Nigeria, then you will pretend not to know how serious uh, the issue of insecurity is when it concerns um, people carrying arms. I mean, we started off um, years ago, decades ago, with uh, people being killed uh, because of their farmland um, by, uh, by headsmen. Let's not beat about the bush. And then we have, uh, and then Boko Haram came into, into the picture. And uh, places like the Middle Belt, uh, uh, then Southwest, Southeast, and even the Niger Delta region have suffered there to a very large extent their own onslaught 
of people being killed, being raped in their farmland uh, so that cattle or cow can graze because some people say it is their birthright. No. So if today we have a situation where the Southwest have finally decided that it is a basic human right, it is a right of government to protect life and property. Nigeria has signed up to the international rights of, uh, of that protocol. Um, it is in our constitution that the basic uh, uh, duty of any government, uh, state government, local government, and federal government is first and foremost to protect the life of people. Now, when you are in a government like we are today in Nigeria, where the army is overwhelmed by Boko Haram, um, the, the states are overwhelmed by Boko Haram, and Ni farmers across Nigeria are overwhelmed by headsmen, and you come to the conclusion that your right to life must be protected. And if you find yourself in a situation where the government of the day is not able, not able and not willing even to protect your life, then it is a right, it's not a force, it is a right for you to protect your life and your property. Now, the governors are the, uh, are the people responsible for, uh, for the protection of lives and property in their state. And if the Southwest have taken the responsibility for once to do this, then I, we all must support the Southwest and the Southeast, the South, um, the Niger Delta, the uh, Northeast, North Central, any, the, all the geopolitical zones must come together in their separate zones and in their separate states to guarantee life and property. There is no argument, there is no discourse to say that people will use this to secede from Nigeria. The discussion of secession, the discussion of, um, of uh, self-determination, uh, federalism, um, uh, hundred percent resource ownership and control and management of natural resources is a, uh, a discussion totally on its own. But uh, the discussion of life and property is no less important than all the other discussions of rights of the people to develop themselves in the Niger Delta, we're talking about using our resources to develop ourselves. But you cannot develop yourself if you don't, uh, if you're not alive. And so the issue of security is very important. Governor Wike in uh, River State last year put together along the lines of what Lagos, uh, Lagos had, mm. which is the uh, neighborhood watch, and he was stopped. And so we need to retrace, and this was actually put in place by a bill that was passed in the state, uh, in the state assembly of River State. And so we need to call on all our governors in our region, especially starting with River State government. We need to revisit the neighborhood watch so that we can can guarantee and secure the rights of our people to, uh, to, uh, to stay alive. Quick break now, uh, thank you. Uh, we're, we're, like, we're just quickly going on a quick break now, we'll come back and we'll talk some more. All right, welcome back to the morning show here on Rise News. Uh, we've got Environmental and human rights activist Anki breaks with us. We're talking about uh, the current debacle on uh, Amotekun going on. I just wanted to ask a question. Uh, we had some some people, you know, from a group called Mieti Allah, did say that this was going to affect uh, the presidential ambitions of the Southwest in 2023. I mean, I want you to help us understand how a security outfit to protect people is definitely going to affect, as Mieti Allah says, a presidential ambition in 2023. Well, it is rather a pity that uh, Mieti Allah sees itself as um, a political party and also as an arm of government. Because if it doesn't see itself as such, it is a business. Mieti Allah is about 
uh, cattle rearing and cattle rearers. And so if we are talking, if uh, cattle, an organization protecting the interests of cattle rearers are talking like that, then we need organizations of fishermen from the Niger Delta uh, to also take a position on political, on political issues. Look, we're trying to uh, pretend in Nigeria that what is real is not real. And this is where the problem really is. And this is where people will begin to discuss the issues of secession because when people begin to feel that they are not part of the system, first of all, the Southwest has already done eight years of, uh, of presidency under Obasanjo. Um, the, uh, the Niger Delta have done uh, five elected, uh, sorry, four elected years under uh, Goodluck Jonathan, and one that he ended, he finished the uh, the, the remaining year of um, uh, of Yara Dua. And so, if even if the presidency is going to go back, uh, if, when the presidency is going to go back to the south, which it should then it cannot, the, uh, the Southwest cannot, in all honesty and with serious morals, say that it qualifies. It does not qualify, because in the South, we have three zones. They have done eight. The Niger Delta people have done four elected years. So you can say that there is four elected years remaining for the Niger Delta people. Now, the Igbos have not done any at all. So if you want to be fair, because the South, South, the Niger Delta, have done four elected years, and one that finished up the one of Yaradua, then we can say by mathematics that the Niger Delta should do another three years if we're going by one plus one is two. And then to say that the Igbos will do eight years. So the Southwest have no business, in my opinion, to even attempt or say that they are uh, planning, unless if zoning and rotating is no longer the issue. Then if zoning and rotating is no longer the issue, then we must bring on the table the issue of self-determination. We must bring on the table the issue of resource ownership and resource control. We must bring to the table before 2023 the issue of zoning, I mean, uh, uh, um, zonal or regionalism back to the table. But whether we like it or not, if we do not discuss these things, the prospect of 2020, in the opinion of the Niger Delta self-determination movement, is not even up for discussion. Okay. Because we need to have a situation okay. of equity and justice okay. in Nigeria. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, I, I, you talked about rot rotation and zoning. I just wanted to ask, where is that in the Nigerian constitution? If you can point where it is for me, I'll be so happy. Coupled with that, and Shaita is going to ask you uh, some questions. Uh, the Attorney General did say at first it was not constitutional. Uh, after the meeting with the Vice President, it, it looks all over. Shaita, you want to add some questions to, to it? I mean, definitely. At this point, one of the one of the biggest uh, issues is the model bills that have been drafted. We're talking about personnel being able to have the power to arrest criminals when Amoteku is is in fruition. Now, my question to you is this: Should they be limited to just intelligence gathering, or should they have the power to arrest criminals? As well as at this point that the meeting has happened, should it be on hold up until the legal framework? has been adjusted, or can Amoteku take place, as so to speak? Uh, it's funny that this government, when it suits it, talks about constitution. And when it doesn't suit it, does not talk about uh, a constitution. If we're talking about the constitution, let us scrap the constitution of 1999, because it is not the constitution of we, the people of Nigeria. So having said that, I hope that answers the question of zoning and no zoning. Now, going back to uh, the, uh, the second uh, question. Now, in Kano, we have Isba. In Taraba, we have Anumi. In the northeast, civilian JTF, Kaduna, Sokoto, uh, Yan, Banga, and all these uh, places. Now, for, for years, people in the north have had organizations, even 
to pursue religious issues which Christians don't have. Where in the Constitution is that? Now, if these people in the north, in Zamfara, can carry arms and Kano, they can arrest even policemen for whatever reason, then I see no reason why any other uh, neighborhood watch or protection group from any other part of Nigeria, whether it be the state or, or zonal, why they also should not. What is good for the goose has to be good for the gander. If his bar is arresting people, then the Amateku should be allowed to arrest people. If um, uh, people like Yambanga is carrying arms, then uh, the Amateku also should be able to carry arms. We, we see very clearly headsmen, these are businessmen, headsmen carrying AK-47. What permission do they have? Where in the Constitution? Why can't fishermen carry arms? Where in the Constitution do we see that we can have Isba police and we can have Yambanga? It is because, first of all, we have a police system, no fault of the police force, that they are unable to even provide the legally expected ratio of policemen to citizens that is accepted all over the world. Nigeria cannot provide that. And Nigeria cannot provide the ratio of military men to uh, the ratio of uh, citizens for them to be able to protect the external and internal aggression that may come to their citizens. So if that be the case and the states are recognized on paper as the chief security officers of their states, it means that they must be allowed to carry out this responsibility in their states, in their local government areas. And that's why it is very important that we run a government in Nigeria that is fair and equitable. We cannot have one law for the northern part of Nigeria that works for the north and have another law in the southern part of Nigeria that is totally not working for the south of Nigeria in terms of development, in terms of justice and equity, and in terms of uh, rights to, to resources, and in terms of security. As I said earlier, if you, are, if you don't have security, okay. every other thing falls apart. Because... Okay. Okay, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to come in here. What would you say real quickly about some people that are saying, oh, the reason why the governors are pushing this Amoteco is just to be able to justify their security vote, which is illegal in the first place. What would you say about those people? Uh, see, um, the issue of security votes will not even arise if, one, the states are allowed to keep their resources, to develop their, their, their states and pay tax to federal government. The, there are states that have been created that are not viable, that without oil allocation, oil revenue going to them, these states cannot even pay their salaries of running their government. When you get married to a wife and you cannot rent a house and you cannot pay your children's school fees and you cannot give money to your wife to go to market, you're not a husband and you're not a man and you shouldn't have married in the first place. It applies to these unviable states in Nigeria that cannot pay salaries without my oil money, that cannot uh, develop their states without my oil money. We must... Okay, okay. we'd well, like to say a very big thank you to you, Ankyo Briggs, you know, for joining us and sharing your thoughts about this. Very rich conversation we had with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much uh, for getting out out of Port Harcourt and coming all the way for Abuja. Definitely. That brings us to the end of the show today. I'm Rafa Yoseni. And I'm Shaito Atigari. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow us on all the social media handles showing now on the screen. This is Arise News.